is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car track suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2023 acura rdx courtesy of bobby wright hall acura in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so today we're in this one because there is a brand new two years or 24,000 miles of complimentary maintenance so that's a good start but it's been quite a while since i've actually reviewed the rdx and i'm an acura fan my first car was an acura an acura rsx back in the day so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2023 rdx of course you got the base trim level starting at forty one thousand five hundred and fifty dollars technology for forty four thousand two hundred a spec for forty seven thousand two hundred advance which actually is the one we have today starting at fifty one thousand five hundred and fifty dollars and lastly the a spec advance that one is going to start at fifty three thousand five hundred and fifty dollars by the way that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration you can add all wheel drive of course super handling all wheel drive is the specific name for Acura's all-wheel drive system, but that is going to add $2,200 to any of those prices. But regardless of trim level that you go with, power plant on the RDX is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a two-liter turbocharged inline four-cylinder, putting out 272 horsepower at 6,500 RPM, 280 pound-feet of torque, coming in at 1,600 RPM. Again, power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a 10-speed automatic with paddle shifters. You guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 6.2 seconds that's dang impressive with mpg numbers coming in at 22 in the city 28 on the highway for the front wheel drive 21 city 27 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking premium unleaded fuel so then before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the rdx i wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes it's labeled dynamic mode it's a circular dial located just up top of the shift buttons and yes there's no traditional gear shifter in acuras for the most part it's just the shift buttons which you should be familiar with if you've owned an acura before but anyways drive modes will include normal comfort sport and snow adjusting things like the shift points throttle response steering sensitivity ambient lighting engine sound and suspension settings that is a ton of adjustments quite a bit more adjustments than i typically find on other manufacturers so that's pretty cool so anyways now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters here to the test let's see how quickly then they are going to react for us here all right so we are at a standstill here we got it in sport driving mode let's do this paddle shifter test yo baby quick actually quick yeah they're nice honestly with the 10 speed automatic the paddle shifters are dang good and i put it that way because if it was paired up with the cvt it might not be as good but dual clutch is usually the best but with the 10 speed automatic like i said that was dang good i like that and by the way to put it in full manual shift mode i just pressed the d slash s button and that kind of gave me full control over the shifting there but then to just take it out of that manual shift mode just hit that button again and now the car has full control yet again so now Having said that, let's go ahead and find yet another straightaway. Let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly the RDX here can get us up to speed. Three, two, one, yo! Ah! <laughs> That's actually fun, man. That is, that is dang quick. I, I'm sorry, I gotta get a new mount because uh, it's like wiggling back and forth when I hit the acceleration. That's, that's why I had to hold it there, but yeah, that was nice. Plenty of an acceleration for merging onto the highway. Dare I say, that was even fun in an SUV. So, well done, Acura. I love that acceleration. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So, up front, you will find 12.4-inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.2-inch solid rear discs. As far as that braking feel goes, let's hit the brakes. It's not bad. I like it. And the way I put it that way, because actually back in the day i know acura had a kind of a soft braking feel there was like a dead spot on the rdx but i feel like they have definitely fixed that because that braking feel was plenty fine for me at least so no issues there then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars but if you go with one of the advanced trim levels like we have today you're also going to get an adaptive damping suspension so essentially what that is it's going to monitor each shock absorber individually not only giving you a smoother ride but also tightening up the suspension during heavy cornering really giving you the best of both worlds a better handling as well so that is always a suspension setup i like to recommend because 
you can notice the difference. If you drive enough cars, I'm telling you guys, you can notice it's a smoother ride. You can also notice the handling characteristics as well. So I'm a big fan of that. And that is what we have today. As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine on my short test drive. I will say I'm riding over some rocks right now, but it has been perfectly fine on my short little test drive here today. So I'd have no issues with that. First thing I noticed when I first hopped in this one was the steering feel though. It's definitely weighted on the heavier side of things, which Acura tends to do, which I love. I'm a huge fan of the steering feel in this thing. So I was definitely liking that. As far as cabin noise goes, that's been perfectly fine in my short test drive here as well. And that may be due in part because every single trim level comes with an acoustic laminated front windshield. So that is a big win there. And touching on visibility as I am looking onto the uh, kind of river or stream in the background there, it looks perfectly fine. So definitely not gonna have any issues with rear visibility. And I will say rain sensing windshield wipers come with the advance and A spec advance, meaning if the RDX detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. And then in addition to that, there is a 10.5 inch head up display, again, coming with those advanced trim levels. I'm currently looking at that as well. It's projecting my speed, speed limit and safety features up onto my windshield. So that is going to assist with forward visibility on top of that. So that's nice as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Acura RDX. All right, and so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Acura RDX finished in lunar silver metallic. So that is the exact exterior color that we have on this one here today. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. VIN number starts with the number five, indicating that the RDX is built here in the US, specifically Ohio, in case you were curious. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front. As always, you got that massive Acura logo front and center, probably the largest logo of any other manufacturer out there that I know of. So definitely makes a statement up front in the middle of that grill, but to the sides, dual eye LED headlights do come standard on every single trim level across the board. So tons of illumination there with LED daytime running lights. You do get the automatic feature as well, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there, but also automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically then bounce it back up to high beams. So that is pretty cool as well. LED fog lights coming with the A spec trim level and up. You guys could see them down at the very bottom there and uh, some chrome accenting just below them as well, actually. But there is also, of course, some front air curtains to the sides, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics there as well. But front end definitely looks like an Acura. It's the same design language that pretty much all of their cars have, but very nice looking front end. But let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the RDX, gloss black window surround do come standard but i do like the chrome upper window trim you guys can see that so i guess they're not full gloss black window surrounds but anyways rear privacy glass also coming standard got some a spec badging on the front fender of course if you go with that a spec trim level taking a look at the side mirrors they are body color power adjustable side mirrors they are actually heated with led integrated turn signals also all trim levels are going to get the reverse gear tilt down feature that doesn't always come standard on all trims so i'd like that and then if you were to go with the advanced trim levels it's going to add to that led puddle light and power folding side mirrors actually as well. So big fan of that. But then take a look down to the wheel setup, 19 by eight inch alloys for the base and technology trims, and then 20 by eight inch alloys for the A-spec trim level end up. But pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the RDX, all the way to the top, of course, you got that body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, got the rear window wiper as well. You got the super handling all wheel drive badging found on the rear lift gate there, but I love these C-shaped LED tail lights there. They definitely make a statement and they are super bright. So added illumination at night there. So just below everything, the exhaust outlets are gonna differ slightly depending upon the the trim level that you go with. So we got these rectangular exhaust outlets finished in the satin chrome on our advanced trim level. But I will say, if you go with the A spec, you're gonna get some massive circular exhaust outlets. But either way, dual exhaust outlets. So I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip.
Right, and so now since we are around to the back of the RDX, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate. We actually have a hands-free power tailgate on our advanced trim level here. But anyways, once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 29.5 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there actually are some levers in the cargo area. You just simply pull them. The rear seats are going to fold down, bumping that up to 58.9 cubic feet. And by the way, that is a 60-40 split in case you were curious. There is some cargo lighting back there. Of course, there is a 12 volt power outlet if you were to go with one of the advanced trim levels there's some chrome plated tie down anchors as well grocery bag hooks and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you are going to find some in-floor storage and actually a decent amount of in-floor storage more than i typically see so big fan of that but then making our way up to the rear legroom coming in at 38 inches even for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there there is a rear center armrest with cup holders there's some rear ventilation back there one of the cool things because it is uh how cold is it today 16 degrees out right now that's freaking cold heated rear seats coming on the advanced trim level so get to spoil the rear passengers back there on 16 degree days in pennsylvania exactly like today but anyways then make our way up to the front seats 12-way power adjustable front seats with power lumbar support heated front seats also coming standard ventilated front seats are going to come in the a spec trim level and up you're going to get milano premium leather for the technology and advanced trim levels and actually a leather suede combination for the a spec trim so that's pretty cool and then 16-way power adjustable front seats with power thigh support and power side bolsters for those advanced trim levels so didn't want to mention that as well but overall seating was actually plenty comfortable i had absolutely no issues with seat comfort and that may be due in part because they got vertical seams a lot of car manufacturers will give you horizontal seams giving you awkward pressure points but with the vertical seams you never get that so incredibly comfortable seats big fan there so then taking a look at the steering wheel it of course is tilt and telescoping it is manually adjustable it is leather wrapped for all trim levels across the board but if you were to go with those a spec trim levels you're going to get a flat bottom and then heated steering wheel coming with the a spec advance and regular advanced trim level like we have today so that's going to be a little button located on the left side of the steering wheel thank god we got that because it is so cold and my hands are numb from filming around this car right now so anyways then making our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your acura logo on the one side and actually some cool acura badging on the side of the key as well i almost didn't even notice that that's pretty cool got lock unlock the engine hold button that's going to be your remote start for warming this thing up on super cold days that comes with the advanced trim levels only by the way but ultimately it is all keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels so i'm just gonna simply put my foot on the brake and press that silver and red engine start button located just by the driver's right knee and so once started up tachometer is all the way on your left speedometer is on your right there is a digital display front and center of course you can control what is on that digital display by using the steering wheel mounted controls there's things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty a massive digital speedometer if you wanted to go that route there's your outside temperature of course your drive modes there's going to be the speed limit indicator up there as well so pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges i'll just put it that way and then make our way to overall interior quality a panoramic roof is going to come standard on every single trim level across the board that's something you usually don't get standard so i wanted to emphasize that home lane controls though also coming standard for all trim levels that's going to be found just underneath of that frameless rear view mirror for up to three different garage doors so a big fan of that you do get an overhead sunglass holder that comes standard for all trim levels of course as well wireless phone charger also standard for all trim levels and that's kind of in this hidden area just below all the shift buttons and everything so i like that that's pretty cool dual zone climate control coming standard for all trim levels across the board but one of my favorite parts i know Notice this when I first got in this thing ambient LED lighting with 27 themes coming on the technology trim level and up so right around the shift buttons here in the touchpad controller we got some bright red ambient lighting right now so that's pretty cool I like that but anyways brushed aluminum trim is going to come standard unless you go with the advanced trim level in which case you are going to get open pour wood trim found in the doors above the passenger side glove box and some other areas as well so since we have one of the fancy trim levels I definitely was a fan of the interior quality a lot of contrast stitching a lot of soft touch material on the doors as well even the speaker covers are actually made of aluminum so like i said the wireless phone charger being hidden i like that there's a 12 volt power outlet under there some more rubberized storage just behind the shift buttons you have your dual cup holders a little more rubberized storage and 
within the center armrest. Eh, not a ton of space, but it should be enough. But I like the open pour wood trim. That was pretty darn cool. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. 10.2 inch infotainment screen is going to come standard. It's not touch screen. Honestly, it would be a reach if it was. There's simply a touchpad controller and buttons located just kind of behind the shift buttons here. And that's how you're going to control everything. So Bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard. But here's my favorite part, you guys wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So it's wireless for both, even my Android phone. So a lot of manufacturers right now are doing wireless Apple CarPlay, but they don't always do the wireless part on the Android Auto, but Acura does. So hallelujah, big fan of that. Factory navigation system though, coming on the technology trim level and up. You can check out your climate control settings up there if you wanted to, as well as your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, you will find nine speakers on the base trim level, but for the technology trim level and up you're going to get a 16 speaker ELS studio sound system with 710 watts recently listened to that sound system in the Integra and I absolutely fell in love with it so I am curious what it's going to sound like here in our RDX so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out our ELS studio sound system that we have with us here today love it all right i'm just gonna say this right now forget bowers and wilkins i have said that's been my favorite sound system for the longest time in the volvo s90 els studio has now become my favorite sound system right now the way they currently have it both in the integra and this rdx i am currently in that sound system was incredible for 710 watts especially i mean i've tested 1900 watt sound system that's the bowers and wilkins in the volvo s90 but this this is incredible the integra is incredible about to drive the mdx now i'm sure that'll be incredible as well but els studio has now taken the number one sound system for me than any other brand out there than Harman Kardon, than bowers and wilkins the mark levinson all of them this is incredible that sound system was breathtaking anyways i keep rambling last thing i wanted to mention you guys on the infotainment screen of course is when you do put the rdx in reverse you simply just press down on that r button for one but that is going to give you a rear view camera coming standard across the board you're also going to get a surround view monitor if you go with one of the advanced trim levels which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start iihs top safety pick plus which is the very highest designation given by iihs so pretty much says it all right there front side side current airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard what Acura calls Acura Watch. That's their safety suite, of course. That includes collision mitigation braking system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, road departure mitigation system, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, traffic sign recognition, and a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. And then if you were to go with the technology package and up, you're gonna get front and rear parking sensors. And so when it comes to my final thoughts, that sound system blows everything out of the water. So the best sound system available right now in my personal opinion of course after driving 700 cars though also love the massive exhaust outlets at least if you go with the a spec these exhaust outlets are okay but they're circular exhaust outlets i'll see if i can get a shot for you guys but they're just brilliant great handling in this thing as well i will say that the steering feel is quite nice not as nice as the integra but still plenty nice for an suv as far as room for improvement goes i got two things one the gauge cluster it used to have these old rsx throwback style gauges i don't see that maybe it's just the advanced trim level that we have maybe the a spec has it i don't know but not a huge fan of the gauges they could either make it a full digital gauge cluster which would be nice or go with the rsx throwback gauges that would be nice as well and the infotainment screen is not the easiest to use maybe i would get used to it but this tiny little touchpad controller i i think it at least needs like a tune button i see it has the volume button which is nice but actually change the station i depressed this thing in so many times to actually get there so i don't know those are my constructive criticisms and that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay old